Hello guys, more Mueller Breslow, more qualitative influence lines. So, in the past, some of my other examples that we did, or that I did, and hopefully you watch and learn from them, we did this problem. And we have to find the reaction at A, just the influence line. Draw the influence line for the reaction at A, the moment at C, and the C adjust to the right of the support A. And these are the same papers that I use when I prepare it reaction at A, we have these values here, and then we went and we did the moment at C, and then we did the influence line just to the right of the support. Now we're going to repeat this problem. However, we're going to use the muller breslow approach for that one. And it's not only now about drawing influence lines, but it is applying the influence lines. So I want to apply the influence lines for this beam, assuming that there's going to be a dead load, factor dead load of 0 0.6 skip per foot, and it's going to be also a factor life load of 2 skip per foot. It's going to be a concentrated, a factor concentrated life load of a kip. When I say factor, that means that the already the coefficients for dead load and live load have been applied, 1.6, 1.2, corresponding. So this is the problem. Let's start with the first part, maximum positive upward reaction at A. How do you do that, muller breslow if, if this is the beam that we have, and we have to find the reaction at Y, what we have to do is what? We keep this roller like there, and we release the vertical reaction here, and then the only thing that we do is we apply a displacement in that part, a virtual displacement. And this is gonna be the shape of the influence line for that. Now we can come and don't, please don't get, don't confuse this with shear moment diagram even though they might be related, but don't confuse that with that. I'm just gonna use this part to plot that influence line. Remember, in this part, wherever we have the, the support is gonna pivot. Where is my ruler? I don't know where the ruler is, but I know that we said that it was gonna pivot like that, and this, is, this was gonna happen. <laughs> I use a ruler, <laughs> and look how really really bad thing I did here but anyway you got the idea right do what I say don't do what I do and because when this was here and I apply this force the virtual displacement that I am applying this one here this displacement is one and we have all the distances so if this is one and I want to know how much is the virtual displacement here well you can say that this one is at 20 so 1 divided by 20, 1 divided by 20 has to be equal to this displacement in, I don't know, D. The displacement in D, Y, D, divided by 10, 20, 30. And then that distance is going to be 1.5, 1.5. Now, if I want to know this distance here, same thing, this angle is the same angle, so if this is 1, I can say 1 is at 20, as this uh, y f e y e is at 5. And then we can solve for that y e here, and that y e is going to be equal to uh, 5 divided by 20, which is 0 0.25. Of course, it's going to be negative because it's going to be in this part. Influence line for the reaction at A, done, completed. Now, what do we do with it? What we have to do is this influence line is going to tell us if we want to produce a maximum positive, meaning upward reaction, this is going to be the influence area for that. What do we do with this? How do we place the loads? We start with the dead load. Dead load, we can't do anything about it. The dead load that acts everywhere, so the dead load is going to be acting everywhere, like that. Once again, if this is the, if this is the girder that we're studying, 
this is going to happen and this is a y here and this is b y then the, the dead load is going to be acting everywhere and this is going to be 0 0.6 keep per foot or per feet per foot there now the live load can move so if we are what we are looking for is a maximum positive effect then I should place my live load wherever I have a positive influence area and let's say that this is the live load distributed live load and the value for this is 0 0.6 keep per foot Oh, two. Where are you? Two. Two. What are you doing, Ricardo? Two keep per foot. Okay, there. And then I have a concentrated live load, which, if I have to apply that, the maximum influence for that should be here because this value is the maximum value that we have, and this is a keep. Now, how do we find the maximum value? overall upward value for AY. AY is going to be equal to all this area, but remember this part is positive, so this area, the area of the triangle, let's start with this, this is here. 8 times 1.5, the concentrated load times the ordinate here, 1.5. Now we have this other part here. This other part here is this area, the area of this triangle the area of this triangle 1.5 and this is 10, 20, 30, 30 positive area so plus 1.5 times 30 divided by 2 which is this part multiply that by the live load which is 2 and then the live load is also the that's all for the live load now the dead load is here I should have put this in a different color just for that. So this is live load. Now plus the dead load. The dead load we're gonna have the same area, the same area here, which is gonna be 1.5 times 30 divided by 2, the triangular positive area, multiplied by the, the, the value of the dead load, which is 0 0.6. But then I have to include this negative area also because the, there's no way that I can just disappear the dead load from there. S then we just get that part and we subtract that area, 0 0.25 times 5. We're going to subtract that area, 0 0.25 times 5 divided by 2, multiply by 0 0.6. When we do this, let me see we come with a value of 8 times 1.5 times 1.5 times 30 divided by 2 multiply by 2, I don't know what I'm doing honestly plus 1.5 times 15 times 0.6 minus 0.25 times 2.5 times 0.6 and that's gonna look, the answer for that is quit I should quit I should stop teaching at least not today 8 times 1.5 plus times 15 times 2.6 minus 0.25 times 5 by 2 times 0.6 okay now it's not quit again now it's 70.125 70.125, 70.125, keep. That will be the value for AY. There you go. There's another way of doing this. I don't know why, but just for the sake of learning, or for the sake of I didn't know how to calculate these values and I'm doing something really difficult of course in this case it's super easy to calculate these ordinates here but let's say that I don't know how to then I know the location of the loads and this is the location of the loads if this is the location for those loads I perfectly can do a statics in this uh, beam in this girder 
and calculate the reaction AY once I have the location of the load. Let's do that. This is 30. So the, the concentrated life load coming from this is going to be here at 15. Uh, this is going to be 30 times 2 divided by 2. 30 times 2, I'm sorry. 30 times 2, uh, 60. Keep located at that location. And the distance from here is going to be 10 and 5. So this is going to be 5. And the distance here is going to be 10 plus 5, also 15. 15. And then the distributed load here is going to be 10, 30, 35, 17.5. So somewhere about around here, I have a load of uh, 0 0.6 times 35. 0 0.6 times 35. 0 0.6 times 35 is 21. 21. I should do that in my head. Mental note for myself. 21. Location for that is 17.5 or 12.5 from here because it's at the center and then we do summation of moments at B equals 0 there you go then what do we have 8 times 30 and then minus AY times 20 plus 60 times 15 plus this one which is 21 times 12.5 equals 0 and when we solve for a y is 70.125 okay same thing look at that look at that first part of the problem completed watch the next video See you later, alligator.